Okay, thanks for staying with me. This is going to be the last part of my SN2, SN1 reactions. I know you guys are probably a little sick of me right now, but uh, okay, so for this reaction here, right, where are we going to, how are we going to start the mechanism? So do we do this like we did in SN2? And the answer is no. That's the most commonly made mistake. People think, okay, people learn SN2 and they're like, okay, SN1 probably works the same way. And then when, when they're on the test, they're like, oh, I know what happens. That happens. But then that's actually not what happens. If you remember my first point, right, I said that SN1 has weak, has a, it needs to have a weak nucleophile. So the nucleophile, meth methanol, it's not very reactive, it won't just attack. And also, methanol can't access the carbon here because methanol can't get to the center of the, the it can't get to the center carbon, also known as the alpha carbon. Don't need to know that term. I don't know why I brought that in in the first place. But yeah, a methanol can't get to the can't get into the center carbon, like in, a, in an SN two reaction, right? So this can't be the first step. Hope you guys can see that. I see that. But yeah, basically, instead of that, in this case here, remember remember what the one stood for in the SN one reaction. Only one thing affects the rate of the reaction, and that's the leaving group, because the leaving group needs to leave, or going back to my analogy, the older brother has to stop playing the game system and let the younger brother play in order for it to happen. Because the older, if the older brother, if the older brother keeps playing, the younger brother is never gonna get the chance. So this leaves, and then what you get next is I mean, make sure you use equilibrium arrows. That's the double-headed arrow thing. But you get uh, CH three, CH three, CH three. Okay, but are you done though? No, because you're missing a positive charge here. Like before, with the whole electron that was with the electrons being shared between the carbon and bromine, the bromine took it, so now the carbon has a positive charge. And then you also have a you also have a Br minus over here. Okay. So now it makes sense for the methanol attack. A lot of people always do this. They always think, okay, there's a positive charge here, there's a negative charge here, why don't we fix it by just attacking it again? Well, that doesn't happen because that would just bring us back to here. There's no point to that. So we're going to use the alcohol's electrons to satisfy that charge. And now that it's a carbocation, um, sorry, not that it's a carbocation, now that it's a, uh, let's see, what, what is this called? Now that it is trigonal planar shaped because it lost the, the fourth um, atom bonded to the carbon. I don't know if you guys remember this from Gen Chem, but trigonal planar, tetrahedral. Well, this is tetrahedral. And trigonal planar basically, ha what your atom goes into that shape when the bromine leaves, right? There's an opening right here. So there's more room here. So your molecules orient themselves so they're all equally spaced from each other to prevent like clashing between the, their electron clouds. So instead of picturing your mushroom tertiary carbon thing like this, right? Picture it like this. If I had a mushroom going up, a mushroom over here, and a mushroom over here, right? In that case, both both the front is open, and so is the back. The back is not as cramped up as it looks over here. So your methanol, right, can attack through the front and stick on, or it can attack from the back. It doesn't remember. It doesn't look like this. So the back looks like this as well. So it can get it can get. Substitute it in like that. Um, where was I? Where was I? Uh, yes. So I was here. Um, my methanol attacked. Oh yeah, like I said, it can attack from the front, or it can attack the back. So then you end up getting two products, and that's what I meant by front side, back side inversion. You're, you're going to get a 50-50 mixture of the product where it attacks from the front, or the product where it attacks from the back. Because remember, you're, in, you're working in the test tube, right? So there's going to be meth methanols all, all around your substrate. Yeah, so that's front side, back side. So you're going to get inversion, meaning that your methanol is going to end up on the opposite side of the leaving group, or retention, which means that it's going to end up on the same side. But don't worry, I'll show you right now. So you're going to get one product that's like this. And then one product that's like this. 
C, CH3, CH3, right? And then, so for the product where it attacks in the front, your methanol is just going to add up in the front. And I just wrote it this way. Just, yeah, CH3. And I know it's getting a little crowded, but just bear with me. You're going to get that, uh, I guess, or, or slash and, this one. CH3, CH3, um, OH, CH3, ah, uh, CH, oh no, I, I screwed up, because that's exactly like that. <laughs> no good. Alright, I'm almost done. Just keep looking at the back of my head for a couple more seconds. Hold on, I lied, more than a couple more seconds, but, alright, yeah, this is your, your two products. It's uh, you're going to get inversion, where your methanol ends up in the back, opposite, uh, being dashed, opposite what the bromine was before, or your methanol is going to end up attacking the front, being wedged, like before, meaning retention, and front side, back side, 50-50. You understand now why it has to be a tertiary carbon, right? Because of the whole, yeah, it has, it has to be a tertiary carbon because if it was a primary carbon, like SN2, then your methanol can just attack in the back. But anyway, I'm going to erase this up. You have more space, so copy it down if you want to, but yeah. What else happens? Oh yeah, am I done here? Check the two molecules. Hit pause. Hope you hit pause. If you didn't, well, I'll tell you right now. There should be a positive charge on your oxygens, right? Because oxygen before was nice and neutral, but then when it attacked, just like before, it's sharing electrons with the carbon. So now the oxygen has three bonds. So now it's positive, and it's positive here as well. So my question to you guys is, what the heck do we do now? Where, how can we satisfy this, ne this positive charge? How can we give it electrons? And the answer is that the bromine can help us out. Instead of the bromine actually giving its electrons to the oxygen, it's going to target the hydrogen that's attached to the oxygens. So I'm going to raise the hydrogens and draw the bonds. going to target the hydrogens and now and take and grab the hydrogens so now your hydrogens uh, they're they're bonded to the bromine now and they don't need the, they don't need their electrons anymore so the electrons in the bond just goes to the o goes to the o i guess that was a bad way of drawing it but it goes to the o and then you get your final products ooh ooh that will be your two products right and you're not done because remember your bromine took the hydrogens, so you end up with HBr and HBr. Okay, all right. And that's basically it for SN2, SN1. I know this part got kind of crazy. If you miss, if you lost me at certain points, post a comment down below, and then I'll try and respond, or just take a jump, uh, jump back a little bit, and see if it'll make some sense.